All right, and welcome to IFN TV. I'm here today with um, Muhammad Khatib, the chairman of Pass Solutions. So good to have you here today with us. Um, so we're here at IFN Indonesia, and obviously fintech was the talk of town. You know, you hear people are mentioning it on stage, and one um, in during your session earlier, you also mentioned about blockchain. Um, so let's start off with what are your we we talk about blockchain as being transformative and disruptive really but what are your thoughts on blockchain and how do you think that the technology will impact Islamic financial services? Um, first of all let me uh, differentiate between blockchain and crypto cryptocurrency because a lot of people mix up uh, those two things. Uh, the blockchain is the technology the underneath the technology that actually cryptocurrency is running on. Cryptocurrency got a lot of uh, bad rap, and and uh, many people question actually if it's Islamic or Sharia compliant. Um, so this is really up for discussion, and we haven't really seen a lot of scholars, probably one or two, who actually uh, came out and said uh, cryptocurrency is actually Sharia compliant. Uh, blockchain itself is an amazing technology, and it's an infrastructure technology that allow uh, uh, two parties to communicate in very secure and uh, confidential way. And uh, of course, uh, on top of uh, blockchain, you can have the smart contracts, which are very important uh, documentation of any transactions. So I believe uh, they, th this will transform the whole uh, internet because till date, uh, the internet has been insecure. Like you, when you get an email or you uh, receive a piece of information, we saw what happened in the US election and all that. You really don't know who's the source of this information. I believe uh, blockchain will uh, transform the internet and allow this public uh, network to be confidential and trustworthy. And this is probably the most important uh, aspect of this technology. You will be able to do transactions, financial transactions, and um, uh, do smart contracts between two parties in a very confidential and very trustworthy and secure way. This is why I believe it will transform the whole industry and it's very critical for uh, Islamic finance. Transparency, accountability, security. But um, apart from apart from blockchain, uh, what other trends? You know, what other um, fintech uh, fintech pattern are we seeing in the Islamic finance space? Where do you see opportunities? How do you think Islamic financial institutions can leverage? Um, of course, uh, when it comes to uh, technologies, it's what we call the fourth industrial revolution technologies. Uh, Islamic finance is not in uh, isolated from what's happening around the world. Uh, I believe one of the most important technologies is the artificial intelligence, AI. It will definitely transform the uh, financial industry as a whole and Islamic finance uh, definitely will uh, take use of, of uh, this important uh, development. Artificial, artificial intelligence will play part in so many aspects of the financial industry, uh, fraud detection, uh, pattern recognition, um, chatbots, all these things uh, you will see a lot of banks and already a lot of banks are using the, the chatbots to replace uh, their um, support. Uh, you will see uh, the fraud detection, a, a huge amount of data is coming uh, through the internet and the social media, the pattern recognition, knowing your customer. Uh, banks will always, always talk about segmentation. I think it's going to become uh, the segmentation of one, you, one person, individual, knowing everything that he needs and target that individual instead of just saying, is it, uh, the person a male or female, is he the age or whatever. So the segmentation of one is very, very important uh, trend and only the, um, uh, the, um, the computational power of big data and the analytics of this huge amount of data that's coming through the different channels. Uh, the digitalization is playing a tremendous role in the banking sector and Islamic finance definitely, which is basically you have all these channels that uh, a customer will be communicating with the bank through, and mostly digital channels at uh, 24 hours a day. And you have this tremendous amount of data through the social uh, um, media that you can collect about this customer and uh, understand that customer. So understanding, knowing your customer will become tremendous uh, 
uh, uh, new uh, development. In addition to the blockchain and the artificial intelligence and digitalization, you have the robotics and you have the other, um, uh, what we call the fourth industrial re re revolution technologies that I believe will be a very critical role in uh, shaping the financial industry worldwide and, and will shape, definitely will shape the Islamic uh, financial industry as a, a sub-segment. Top Solution is a global company with a very wide geographical footprint. Um, so in your experience, in your observation, um, which markets are more I suppose more resistant to adopting change, or, or, or more, um, they are they are less um, adaptive when it comes to to implementing new technology, and which are more uh, bold, or or uh, when it comes to experimenting with new technology. What we have noticed um, is that uh, Western world, especially in Europe and uh, uh, Great Britain, the government is taking uh, steps to force. Uh, the financial industry to open up. So we have the directive from the EU, PSD2, that forces every bank to open their API and allow fintechs to access to their data. The same thing with open banking in England. Uh, we, we saw um, also the British government forcing the banks to open up their data. Uh, we believe uh, other banks in Asia and uh, even in the US recognize it out of uh, an opportunity versus being forced by the regulator. And they are building uh, this openness and this digitalization into their systems. What we also saw, which is very important, is in Africa, where there is no traditional legacy networks. They're actually using mobility, and they're adva very advanced in mobility. In, um, uh, and a lot of banking services are using this mobility in Africa to replace the traditional network and actually to skip over the, what we call the copper network and, and the traditional network. So we saw on the both extremes an aggressive move toward this technology. What we've seen is the uh, middle market and some of the middle, middle East countries where regulators have not been as aggressive after, to go after this technology and uh, we have not seen as much movement toward fintechs as uh, in other countries. But we believe that the whole world is moving. Uh, it's just different speeds. And uh, I don't think there is any country can uh, afford to, uh, to slow down. And as far as Islamic financial institutions are concerned, what do you think are the biggest challenges Sharia banks uh, face um, in implementing or adopting technology? Uh, I believe. Um, when I look at the banks, I do not differentiate between Sharia-based banks and uh, traditional-based banks. Uh, I more uh, differentiate between tier one, tier two, and tier three banks. So you will find the Sharia-compliant uh, tier one banks are more advanced in technology and moving because they are competing in most of our markets. They are competing against the large traditional banks. Uh, I believe the challenge comes with the smaller banks that is not well capitalized and they do not have the staff and the knowledge to actually get into the technology. And they, they have to get more aggressive. They have to partner with the right companies and actually uh, address this issue because I believe it's a very critical issue and it's very important that uh, they get with, with it. So I, I believe that the higher tier one are doing uh, very well. Uh, the middle and, and, and uh, the SMEs are not doing as much. So when we talk about technology, of course, there are, there are a lot of benefits, a lot of merits. By the same way, as we become more um, digitalized, uh, more dependent on, on digital technology, we are also opening ourselves up to be more vulnerable to digital uh, cyber attacks. So how can um, banks or, or financial institu institutions position themselves to mitigate themselves from, from the risk of you know, um, cyber security threats? Um, just like any other technology, uh, it's in the beginning of, of any technology, you'll find a lot of uh, doubters and a lot of uh, risks and a lot of uh, issues that they just get ironed out with time. I believe uh, most of the banks, if you look at the cybersecurity, it is one of the top priorities in every CIO in the bank and all of the studies that says, if you look at the top priorities, usually in the top three, uh, cybersecurity is very important. Uh, most of the banks um, understand the importance of this uh, uh, issue and they are putting a really a huge focus on it, which 
uh, allowing them to address it uh, better. I believe so far from the banks that we're working with, um, they're doing very well. Of course, there's always going to be issues and there's always going to be threats, but we, we feel that uh, the industry first and the technology side and uh, the financial industry uh, realize the importance of it and addressing it uh, very well. So I really don't think it should slow people from adopting technology. I don't believe it should. Um, we, 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 we have to understand it and we just have to address it. So uh, last question before we wrap up. So what is um, Path Solution working on? What can we expect from the company in the next 12 months? Um, our biggest focus actually is um, just like the whole industry is on digitalization. Our customers are demanding uh, digitalization. We have started investing in this few years back and we're working with uh, most of our customers on moving them to the digital world and uh, opening up their back-end system. So with the uh, release 14, which is being impl implemented in many of our customers, it's an open architecture, an open platform, open API to support the EU uh, and, and, and the British uh, initiatives. Uh, in addition, uh, we actually doing some artificial intelligence. Uh, we're doing fraud management based on artificial intelligence. We are uh, working on uh, a couple of initiatives in blockchain that we will be announcing in 2019. We're very excited about that. And we have two uh, fintechs that actually by end of this month uh, we will be announcing, uh, helping the SMEs uh, in their uh, payment uh, initiatives. So we have a lot of exciting things coming in, and I believe it's exciting times for technology companies. So we're very excited about it.